Ava Chris Tyson's current partner is alleging that Mr. Beast and his investors are trying to keep everyone quiet about the recent allegations. An alleged leaked Discord message from Chris's partner goes into detail about what's happened behind the scenes at Mr. Beast's company since Chris was removed, as well as attempting to defend Chris against every allegation, and even claiming at one point, Jimmy had tears in his eyes while firing his first subscriber, Chris Tyson. Let's get into it. The message is sent by Eretz, Chris Tyson's partner, and fellow content creator who participated in things such as the Dream SMP. It starts off with Eretz saying, I wanted to talk to you all about my relationship with Ava, and everything that has been happening behind the scenes at Mr. Beast. Beast has asked me to not talk about a lot of this publicly, as they are terrified of inflaming a situation that could anger their corporate investors. I can talk about that more later. That being said, you guys deserve full transparency from me and deserve to know what is really happening with everything regarding Ava. I know that this is a wall of text, but it has been consuming my life for the past few weeks, and there is a lot that is hard to talk about publicly that I want to share with you. Ava and I are both disgusted by the person that she used to be. I will go into detail on points, but I need you to know that I would not be dating someone who would behave in the way 2016 to 2018 Ava did. I would not have introduced her to you guys or my community if I didn't know that she would help us do amazing things. If you are somehow out of the loop on the situation, Ava, my partner and Mr. Beast cast member, was recently on the receiving end of a couple of coordinated attack videos that suggested that Ava had groomed a minor. The videos detailed a story of Lava GS, one of Ava's old Discord mods who would go on to get a job at Mr. Beast. Lava GS was 14 at the time which Ava only learned much later on. Lava made a statement expressing that Ava never did anything wrong, and then they attach a tweet from Lava GS, which is the tweet where he says, These videos are massive lies and twisting the truth. Ava never did anything wrong, and just made a few edgy jokes. I was never exploited or taken advantage of. Can you do me a favor and comment on these videos and tell them to stop spreading lies? This situation takes away from children who are actively being exploited every day online. I am not a victim of anything being claimed in these videos or at all. But they continue, despite a lot of these early claims having little weight, they highlighted a large number of incredibly regrettable tweets and posts made by Ava between 2016 to 2018, which she had previously addressed when she was cishet and it was brushed off like no big deal. They combined these tweets with the accusations to paint Ava as a monster. Specific topics. Firstly, I want to say I do not stand by any of Ava's past actions or behavior, but I want you guys to have the full context that explains the gross looking screenshots. Who is Lava GS and what happened in the Discord? The Discord server where Lava would eventually become a mod started as a Discord for Ava to play CSGO with five of her adult friends. These friends invited their friends, and the server grew as online communities do. This was entirely separate from Beast, somewhere Ava could shitpost with her friends. However, it was also 2016. Filthy Frank eating vomit cake and SJW own compilations were the pinnacle of humor. Lava came to Ava, offering to help set up bots on the Discord, and Ava accepted. Ava made several dumb, edgy, or gross jokes, some of which were sexual in nature. At the time, Ava did not know that Lava was a minor. This doesn't make this okay, but I hope it can help show that her behavior at the time was never intentionally harmful. Lava addresses this on his Twitter that I previously linked. Shortly after Ava learned that Lava was a minor, she decided to fully delete the Discord because she realized that it was not a positive influence and wanted to leave that part of her life behind. As a quick interjection, Lava GS actually denies this retelling of events by Eret. Firstly, Nathan W, another member of the Discord who was responsible for the entire leak, replied to a post about this DM from Eret and said, Chris 100% knew Lava's age. That's such a wild claim, especially seeing the Discord server was deleted as soon as Chris found out. Considering Lava joined the Discord around 2017, when he was 14 15, and the server got deleted in 2021. It took Chris four years to realize Lava was a minor after voice chatting with him hours a day per week. 
week. And then Lava quote tweets him saying, yeah, Nathan is right here. Chris definitely knew my age around 2018. Also, the reason Discord deleted is entirely incorrect as well. It was deleted about 10 months after I started at Mr. Beast Gaming. I worked for them for 12 months, not nine. Over the next two years, Lava helped with moderating Ava's personal community Discord and running her Minecraft server. One day, Ava heard Mr. Beast Gaming was looking for people to help with their Minecraft servers. Given Lava's track record, she gets him an interview at Beast. He passed the interview and goes to work in the Mr. Beast Gaming Studio in Greenville, North Carolina. He worked there for nine months. In that time, Ava only ever met him in person when she was on set at the studio or if Lava was helping in a shoot. There was never any inappropriate interaction between them short of the few gross jokes made in a public discord. The Shadman Art In 2016, Ava bought a print from an NSFW slash edgy Twitter artist called Shadman. I haven't seen the pic myself, but I'm not going to seek it out. We can all agree that any inappropriate depictions of minors is sickening. I know Ava wishes that she had never engaged with Shadman, but so many of the YouTubers she looked up to at the time, PewDiePie, OniPlays, Zach Hadel, who would go on to create Smiling Friends, were friends with him, or at least engaged with Shad's content. It almost seemed like certain people could get away with saying and doing gross or terrible things under the premise that, it's an edgy joke, you're too normie to get. Ava fell for this at the time and made a decision to buy the print that I know sickens herself today. Shadman would go on to develop serious drug addictions and start to increasingly draw NSFW art depicting minors. Everyone who has previously supported Shad has distanced themselves from him. Given this, any association with him looks terrible. I hope he's in prison. I have seen some people claiming that Ava commissioned the art from Shadman, but this is not true. Ava bought a print from a link on his Twitter page. Should she have done that? No. Does she regret it? Yes. Does that make it right? No. But I do know that the Ava of 2016 is not the Ava of 2024. She would never make the same mistakes especially now that she is a parent as of 2020. What more can she do to allow her to move on from her past mistakes? Jess. Jess, her ex-assistant, has made a series of claims against Ava. She claimed that Ava pressured her into sexual activities on multiple occasions, among other disgusting accusations. And as for these allegations of essay that Jess has levied against Chris, they are essentially summed up as Eret already described. But if you want to see the entire thing, I'd highly recommend watching Tom Dark's video on the situation, linked below. But they continue, It is very hard to talk about this publicly, as you would ideally want to believe the victim in a SA case. However, having known Jess IRL and been familiar with who she is for months before this, I know the facts. Jess and Ava met over their mutual involvement in trans Twitter and became online friends. Being trans can be very isolating and expensive. Ava was isolated and had the capacity to help Jess with her finances. Ava wanted to help Jess achieve her gender and life goals. The best way to do this would be to get Jess a job where she can get paid through Mr. Beast, as they'll also cover her insurance. Through this job, Jess is paid very well by Mr. Beast, and she is able to help Ava with scheduling, taking care of Tucker, Ava's four-year-old kid, etc. During this time, Jess is living in Ava's house, so that she wouldn't have to pay for rent elsewhere, and Ava is paying for everything. Jess professed her love to Ava a few times, and Ava had responded that she sees her like a sister and wants nothing romantic. Earlier this year, Ava started to spend more time with me. We started dating after we met in person for the first time to see the solar eclipse in Austin. Before this trip, Jess and Ava had been on a trip to Jess's hometown of Boston, where Jess again said she was in love with Ava, but Ava again responded that she sees her as a sister. When Ava came out to meet me in Austin, Jess started to tweet terrible things about being let out in one tweet and threatens to 
herself. Ava and Jess talk it out and Jess deletes the tweets. I had also invited Jess to Austin, but she had refused. You can maybe understand a bit more of how Jess viewed Ava from this brief conversation we had around the time where I wanted to reach out to Jess to show that I am not a threat to her and she described Ava as the most important person in my life. And then they attach a picture of some DMs which starts off with them saying, hey Jess, I've been hearing that you worry that Ava has been ignoring you to spend time with me, and I want to open this line of communication so we can all be on the same side here. Ava cares for you a lot. You are one of the people she trusts most in the world, and I know she will always be there for you when you need it. I'm not very familiar with the dynamic between you two and day-to-day -day stuff, but I know that we are both on the same side. We both care a lot about Ava and I want to see her thrive and succeed. I don't want to be seen as trying to cut you out of things, because I'm not. You were invited to both Austin and LA. I look forward to meeting you at some point down the line. While Ava is my main focus, I want to know and be conscious of everyone she considers close, and you are one of the people who keep coming up as someone she cares about. I am here to make sure no one feels shitty, and if there is anything I can do to make things better, please let me know. Thank you. And then Jess responds, saying, Thank you so much for reaching out. You're an incredibly considerate and compassionate person. Ava has been an amazing friend to me, the likes of which I've never had. We have grown through so much together, and in the process, she became the most important person in my life. Nothing brings me more joy than to see her happy and see her spend time with people who care about her. Our dynamic has grown and changed in many ways, and it's something that I'm still personally learning to deal with. I hope you don't feel bad or responsible anyway for what Ava and I are going through. I personally have been going through a hard time lately and took a lot of it out on Ava. I feel horrible for some things I've said and the way that I acted, but Ava and I have been through a lot and I really hope that we're going to be okay. I look forward to meeting you in the future too and I appreciate you extending all the invitations. Heart, Ava deserves someone like you. When I first came to stay with Ava in North Carolina in May, Jess still lived there. I made an effort to talk with her and tried my best to not make her feel like a third wheel too badly. However, she mainly isolated herself to her room. One night, Ava and I are chatting on the back porch and Jess announces, by the way, I'm heading to Boston tomorrow. This had come out of nowhere. Ava had even ordered furniture to the house under the assumption that Jess would be there, as Ava was out of town with me in LA for pride. That is how fast Jess moved out. Even though Jess had moved to Boston, she somehow still expected expected to be able to do her executive assistant job from there. She had essentially quit. She was getting paid very well by Beast. Didn't pay for rent, food, her laser hair removal appointments. Ava paid for everything. All of that stopped when she left for Boston with no notice. I don't know if she has a job at all. There has already been an ongoing third party HR investigation at Beast for a couple weeks regarding Jess. However, as Mr. Beast has been under so much pressure recently, they don't want anyone to say anything publicly in case it causes more things to flare up online. You can imagine they just want all of this to simmer down and go away. Any response from Ava would flare stuff up again. As a result, nothing can be said. They won't let Ava say, I didn't do it. So the internet just assumes she did it. Public response. I also wanted to address my public response to the situation. I was the one who had to post Ava's terrible first apology tweet as I had changed the password to Ava's Twitter to help her quit it. It had been entirely written by Mr. Beast execs under the insane pressure of Amazon and other corporate investors. The previous week, the first recording attempt for the Mr. Beast Amazon show with 2,000 contestants was a failure which would have been millions thrown away. These accusations hitting directly after that whole project got destroyed made the investors terrified and they basically forced Jimmy to kick Ava out as they considered her guilty until proven innocent. I had protested at how terrible the tweet was and asked if it would be possible to change some words like if I offended and the word permanently. But in a room with Jimmy Beast, 
the Mr. Beast CEO, Mr. Beast COO, and Ava, I was told, no, we cannot change it. We have run it by the investors. We need to say that. And with no other option, I posted the tweet. Jimmy and the CEO had tears in their eyes. They left soon after. And then they link the first Chris Tyson response tweet, which as a reminder reads, I would like to apologize for any of my past behavior or comments if it hurt or offended anyone. It was not my intent. Seeing recent events, we've mutually decided it's best I permanently step away from all things Mr. Beast and social media to focus on my family and mental health. I was understandably very frustrated by the whole situation. They had done nothing to say that Ava wasn't a predator, and they just threw her under the bus. I made my own big tweet expressing this frustration, and then they link their tweet which says, The pure scale of everything at Beast makes uncertainty very hard to stomach. While a lot of the accusations have been proven to be not as serious as some have made them out to be, see Lava GS, Ava's edgy humor in 2016, around when most of these accusations originate, makes it very easy to paint her in a negative light. Ava is an entirely different person from who she was then. The amount of hardships she has had to overcome to exist on the platform she has is unlike anyone else I know. Serious accusations should be addressed. But this leads to a lot of uncertainty in finding the truth. As before, uncertainty is hard to stomach. The actions of Ava eight years ago do not reflect on who she is today. She is an amazing mother, and wants to use her platform to help as many people as she can. Please give Ava time and understanding. She is not the monster she is made out to be. And they continue saying, And within 10 minutes of posting, Jimmy calls me and says, You're right. We really didn't do anything to support Ava. I'm coming over so we can work on something better. He comes over with the COO and develops the follow-up tweets together with Ava. During this drafting process, Jimmy tells me, we're so lucky we have you to help us with this. We've never had to go through anything like this before. I respond, yeah, I really wish you had let me help you with the first tweet. Jimmy then replied, yeah, we did kind of mess up the first one. And just as a reminder, the follow-up tweets are as follows. Chris Tyson says, I want to add I never groomed anyone. The first person who gets brought up in these accusations, Lava GS, has vocally supported that they are false. And there's a community note here that says Lava GS has since come out to disagree with his initial statements. But to be completely fair, that isn't entirely true. Lava GS did make a statement that the separate allegations of the Discord leaks were inappropriate. But Lava GS has clarified multiple times they still don't believe that Chris Tyson groomed them. That's just their opinion. That's what they claim. So Lava GS has not retracted that. Continuing on, Ava Chris Tyson's statement. Having said that, I humbly apologize to anyone I have hurt with my unacceptable social media posts, past actions, and to those who may feel betrayed by how I used to act online. To lump these two factors together to create a narrative that my behavior extended beyond bad edgy jokes is disgusting and did not happen. In past years, I have learned that my old humor is not acceptable. I cannot change who I was but I can continue to work on myself. I don't want these accusations to impact the hundreds of people who work at Mr. Beast, which is why I have stepped away. And back to Eret's statement now where she continues saying, Ava would have had no support if it wasn't for me physically being there. At least Beast had the generosity to pay for my flight out there before they dropped Ava. After those tweets were put out, Mr. Beast higher-ups have been telling us not to say anything publicly as they are terrified of more stories spinning out of control. At the moment, lots of people are seeing weakness at Mr. Beast and are trying to take advantage of the situation. I know they are panicking hard at the moment. Kicking Ava was a knee-jerk reaction to the incredible pressure from their corporate investors. Proper third-party investigations are being done into everything that has been brought up against Ava. These should hopefully conclude within the next few weeks. I hope that when those investigations do conclude, the findings will be shared on official Mr. Beast social media. 
I hope that they will clear Ava's name and that, while the things Ava said and did in 2016 to 2018 were inappropriate and shouldn't have been done, they never extended beyond the poor attempts at jokes that they are. I am also honestly not sure how Jess expects to get away with so many falsehoods in the long run. She provided little evidence and left out anything that made herself look bad. The corporate investors currently do not want Ava to have any social media presence for a number of years. I don't know when or if she's allowed to defend herself. I know this is a lot, but I hope that you did take the time to read it. You will understand why I am still with Ava. Her past actions are disgusting, but I know that she has learned much in the eight years since, during which she has become a parent and also embraced her true self in transitioning. If it were possible to undo the mistakes that you made in the past, I know Ava would, but you can't. I know Ava wants to do good and support good. You have no idea how big we were dreaming for how much good she could do with the Mr. Beast brand behind her. She will probably still be behind the scenes with me sometimes, but probably not on camera. I know she is relieved to finally be free of the pressure of having to be a public figure. It's more terrifying than fun at her level of fame. So that's the whole leaked message from Eric's Discord. If I get more updates, I'll let y'all know. But as of right now, that's everything.